GPM. Go. TCOM. Go. Kcom. Go. Payload secure and readiness cross-check complete, Captain. Houston, this is Emilio 11. We are go for launch. Ready to change history. Boilers to Mars. Make us all proud. We'll see in about 650 days, I'll be. Bobby, can you believe you almost said no to this? Boiler up. planning a new population next week. We're gonna try a new set of symbiotic organisms. Can we just order takeout from the moon? Bobby's on board for the mission. She said yes? She says she's making her way in now. Going to drop in two kilometers north. Perfect chance to test a new nav here. If anyone can make plants grow out of the dust, it's her. Hey. Are you in? No. The mission got moved up. The ship is gonna be ready. Last piece of the puzzle is making sure we get the food supply right. And nobody knows more about that than you. No. Remember the promise we made? It's not like you're asking me on a vacation, Parker. It's years of my life and we might not make it back. Why did it get moved up? I can't tell you. Unless you're coming. You got any plans for the next five to six years? I imagine I'll find out once I open that envelope. It's not just a mission anymore. It's a race. Congratulations, Captain. As you all know, our launch window was 2035. However, new data is showing that window presents two substantial risks. One comes in the form of higher than expected levels of radiation from the sun. The other is that we are no longer the nation on track to get there first. The good news is, because of some AI advancements in our engineering processes and our move away from dependence on foreign semiconductor production over the past two decades, we believe we can move the launch up by 26 months. Perfect 
150 million miles away. It's hard to wrap my brain around. You feel that too? Yeah, I feel it too. As crazy as it sounds, it's like I know I'm meant to go, but everything inside me says no way. Why is that? Now, growing up, my dad was in the Air Force, so we moved around a lot. But just when I'd start to get comfortable, we'd have to pack up and move again. New town, new school, new friends. Wherever the next mission or new orders took us. To me, every move felt scary. I don't know, maybe it wasn't, <laughs> I was just a kid. But my dad seemed so unfazed, so persistent. Then my sophomore year of high school, he got deployed overseas. I saw what was happening in the news, so I knew it was a big deal. I just didn't know why he had to go. Some of his friends, they didn't come back. The night before he left, he came up to my room, sat on my bed. He told me something I would never forget. If you believe in what's ahead, you're not afraid to go first. You know, I was the first one in my family to go away for college. My dad told me the exact same thing the night before I left to come here to Purdue. <laughs> and to be honest, this is the first time in my life where I feel like I could finally call some place my home, a place I chose. <laughs> but 150 million <laughs> miles away, further than any person has ever gone, and where Putting down roots would literally be what I'm in charge of for humanity's survival on the planet? Yeah, it's hard to imagine. But if you believe in what's ahead, not afraid to go first. You have to promise me that if I get the chance to go, that you're coming with me. <laughs> The astronaut farmer? First farmer on Mars! <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Remember what our orientation teacher said on our first day? Every student starts at this moment. Day one of your Purdue education. From all walks of life. And the ones that take giant leaps, they all have the same thing in common. They all chose to take that next small step. And they did it again. And again. And again. Boilermakers like Amelia Earhart and Purdue astronauts like Voss, Moses, Grissom, and Armstrong. Take a look around you. Hey, I'm Parker. I'm Bobby. Some of you are gonna change the course of human history. Change the course of human history.